Hi, greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Miriam, and I've been flipping through the Colburn Bible um, because it is a historical, like a history book in a way. Half of it is a Celtic Bible, and half of it is some Egyptian um, records. This is from the Book of Manuscripts, Chapter 12, the 87th scroll, verse 11. Well, let's back it up to 10. Oh, blind and ignorant people, to cherish the stone gods of death and mock the God of life, O oh, misguided generation, to clasp to its breast the things that inherit decay and spurn the things that inherit everlastingness. Actually, I wanted to go back further than that. The gods of deceit have temples of splendor. Their priests are well clothed and overfed. But the great God of truth has no more than a hidden, hidden cavern. His servants are garbed in rags and their bellies are empty. The gods of lust and cruelty have storehouses of treasure. But Yahuwah of kindness has not even a field. The people worship gods that oppress and ignore. The God who frees. They give to the gods that take and spurn the God who gives. O oh, misguided generation. Jumping down to verse 11. Let the destroyer come as the whirlwind of the barren places in the dread day of its appearance the works of ignorance shall go down to everlasting alright and we're gonna jump cause like I said I was skipping around looking for verses right here now we are in the book of manuscripts chapter 33 annexed scroll 1 oh great city O oh, heart of Egypt, your habitations are overthrown and your sacred shines lie buried beneath the sands of time. The dust of ages enwraps you as a dead one is swathed within the tomb. Your temples still stand and ring with the noise, but the solemn shrines are silent. They have become an abode for the wild dog and scorpion and your roads are highways of wickedness. Behold, in the days long gone down into dust, the whirlwind came and earth poured out her wrathful breath so that you were burnt. The evildoers were swept away by the waters and the wicked ones were swallowed up in the fires. The days of years were shortened and times of all things altered. The seasons were turned around so that the seed rotted within the soil. No green shoots came forth to greet the day. All buds withered upon the vines. The land lay dead under its gray shroud. The moon changed the order of her ways. And the sun set himself a new course so that men knew not where they were. Their compasses weren't working, hmm, and all were afflicted. The stars swam in a new direction, and the whole order of things was changed. Yet, O oh Egypt, even from those days of calamity, you emerged unbroken, your spirit intact, and your heart unshaken. What has happened to you, O oh land of mine? And then it goes into about... 20 pages of lamenting Egypt and we're going to jump over here now we are still in the book of manuscripts we're in chapter 34 now annexed scroll 2 though the followers of Setra could not discover the higher secrets they learned the lower ones and these were twisted to their own ends thus was developed the worship of dark spirits a vile and poisonous thing that perverted the thoughts of the people and led them away from the path of spirituality. 
They strayed into all manner of strange and corrupting byways. Then their hearts hardened by earthly sordidness. They rose up clamoring for the blood of the righteous ones. And it goes on about Setua, but let's jump down here. Um, chapter 34, verse 25. In the temples dedicated to many different gods, the forms of worship were subtly changed to serve another end. The servants of the dark ones were able to display wonders before the multitude, but these wonders were works of deceit. They revealed mysteries, but the mysteries were not the most sacred ones. These were never known by any likely to betray them. The thoughts of the people were poisoned. All manner of rites aimed at satisfying carnal cravings were introduced. Simple, satisfying answers were given to content the hearts of the people. And all manner of rewards were promised. For payment made, men were promised forgiveness of even the most grievous wickednesses. It is well that the ears of the dumb gods were unhearing, or they would have been deafened by the clamor of pleas for petty things. The servants of the dark ones left not even the dead to rest in peace, but sought to satisfy the living with words from beyond the tomb. Even the blood of men was offered in dark places, while in others of greater evil, men, yes, and even children, were tormented to give pleasure. Such is the nature of men when the scales weigh down against righteousness. The hosts of the dark ones were well skilled in battle. We battle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and rulers and powers right the hosts of the dark ones were well skilled in battle they drove out all those who stood against them the forces of righteousness were scattered the sacred shrines which stood before the veil of truth were spoiled the ornaments of beauty and the sacred vessels were taken away to be profaned by sin soiled hands and then, um, you know, this is obviously written by Egyptians. So it's talking about the enlightened ones and the twice born were hunted down like beasts of the chase. They were slain and buried in the ground like dogs. Their resting place remained unmarked and unattended. That was not a good time to be following Yahuwah. But, I mean, it's always a good time to follow Yahuwah because we are not of this world, Amen. The leader of the light cried out, Oh, great Yahuwah, what can I do? How shall your servants be saved? What shall be done unto those who have profaned your sacred shrines? What can I do to turn back the rising waters of iniquity and temper the wild winds of wickedness? How can the black cloud of ignorance be lifted? What shall the just reward of those who have slain the faithful? And the voice came in forth, coming forth by the Spirit of God said, Concern yourself not with those who have persecuted you. Leave them to follow the path of their own choice. Amen. Vengeance is with me. I will measure out without stint. Justice never sleeps and never forgets. The reward of the wicked awaits them. In the hall of no hiding place, justice will speak the final word. And they fled, and um, the, everything was deserted. Um, truth, wisdom left. Um, and it says, The generation of those days passed down into dust. Their spirit arose in the everlasting halls to stand before the inescapable one. Da -da -da. And they're talking about Osiris right there. Um, but because they that was one of their gods that they worshipped but it's talking about ten generations entered into their eternal habitations um, and then Egypt grew real big after that but he there was still a bunch of decay in the land and then there's a new ruler 
and we're going to skip ahead quite a bit and now we are in the let me make sure i didn't mix miss any no i had earmarked a couple of these and they went back through them and they were kind of like this one where they were more about how yahoo is reaching out even to other peoples not just us gentiles but even way back then but way before jesus came he was reaching out to the egyptians okay but now we are in the colburn bible book of origins chapter 3 verse 10 here comes the destroyer the foul breath of the nightcomer newly sprung from the dark depths of its unearthly lair spread across the brightening face of heaven like an evil gray veil and even the ever fearless sun withdrew to gird himself in red war armor the fast being hearts of men first shriveled with despair at the fearsome sight then rose while their throats responded with glad cries as the moon chariot came back over the dim horizon there riding the battle bar flaming sword held high was the bright beloved figure of Lithulan, her fair hair strung out behind as she flew towards the hell figure so you have to remember this part of the bible is from uh, the celtic version um so we'll take that into account but we're we're going to work our way over into um we're, we're here to study planet x not celtic mythology okay <laughs> they met an awful hell echoing clash with the noise of ten thousand rolling thunders and men bold enough to look were stricken with blindness even in the Bible and, uh, and in ancient scriptures, I found it says, close your blinds and don't look outside. Don't even peep because you will be either struck dead or struck with blindness or something horrible will happen to you. <laughs> and those who uncovered their ears were deafened forever. Cold moon tears were shed by the fang and claw torn champion of mankind while the um, hellish awamkored drooled white cinders which if they touched the skins of men below raised evil wheels and it talks about um in the end times that there'll be you know everybody will uh not everybody but those who are not marked by jesus <laughs> by the holy spirit will be covered in like boils or something like that and then i've even seen um people thinking maybe it has something to do with the mark of the beast that it will blow up in their hands and cause them to get sores all over their bodies or something i don't know i don't know but anyway these white ashes as they, as they fall from the sky from this planet x they will definitely burn you the unearthly foemen fell apart and hurled great self-created rocks at each other and on looks lookers below dashed for protective shelter as they howled down out of the sky above the very earth herself immovable herself immovable was sickened with fear and her bowels became loosened with dread her belly trembled before the awful sight men looking anxiously to their lord the sun were dismayed to see his constant change of war garb from red to blue then to yellow then to green then brown gee what are all the colors of the planets we're seeing in the sky right now red blue yellow green brown <laughs> and black let's not forget the black one okay good mother earth opened her ground mouth and roared ear cracking protests while her whole comforting body shook in fear under the gloomy battle shadow form above men and beasts were drawn together in a strange brotherhood of fear none doing harm to another those hardy enough to maintain a watch on the combat saw the flashing chariot of lithalun crush the writhing body of the nightcomer i know what this is these are literally luminaries these are heavenly bodies 
clashing in the sky and they don't know what to call them. So they're like, okay, that one's a female, that one's a male, and their names are X, Y, and Z. But these are the same planets that we're seeing now. Right? Yes. Crush the writhing body of the nightcomer and the, of the nightcomer. That's why we have to stay up all night to see this thing. And then saw its vile black blood, thick like resin, fall upon the thankful bosom of the earth, where the blood fell, flames sprung up. So what if... <laughs> This might sound far out, but what if those fires in California are from a spiritual war that's going on up in the sky above California? Where the blood fell, flames sprung up. The fear, I don't know. I that's I don't I'm not a teacher. I don't know. I'm just that just popped into my head. So God forgive me if I'm completely horribly wrong. <laughs> the fear heated blood despoiled body of mother earth was cooled and refreshed by the soothing moon tears of litholun shed in womanly relief as she drove back towards her hidden abode in the recesses of heaven this is the tale yeah here it explains it this is the tale of the sky fight but whether it happened before or after the generation of Hestabel and the flood tale none now truly knows. It concerns the doom dragon the doom dragon which has come more than once and will come again and the last music mankind will hear is the shrill throbbing notes of the doom song this is the flood tale which has come down to us from our house building forebearers and it happened in days generations ago when men were widely divided out into the gray watery wilderness where now the restless western waters roll and heave there was a place in the far western land it was a country of high mountains higher than by far those known to us and low green grass hills swept down from them to brown fertile plowed lands at the sea edge the folk lived in fine houses though the roofs were flattened and they hunted and they fished in quiet pools and they plucked plentiful herbs which grew in manifold variety um, it was a d indeed a land of peace and plenty. That's a little bit from Revelation. The day came as it come, as come it always must, whenever peace and plenty abide. For then earth displays a defect in her instructiveness. When the soothsayers saw colkers in the night skies, but they were unable to agree amongst themselves as to what those pretended. Some said this and some that, while the wiser ones listened, saying nothing. The day came when sleeping earth awoke to a great silence and stillness, not a breath of air stirring the anticipating trees. No bird left its perch. Every animal remained quiet within its den or in the field. All was hushed and motionless, waiting. Then the soaring sun brought low moaning winds, which stirred the trees and grasses to rustling, murmuring life, but all living creatures huddled closer together. The sky roof above was darkened and lowered. It was ruddily hued. Red gave out sharp whip cracking sounds as though it would break asunder with now and then a shrill long drawn cry in heart thumping procession awesomely figured sky gods never before seen passing overhead and I want to state here that in other ancient scriptures it says the angels will be flying back and forth across the sky and that men will stand in wonder. Um, 
men lived through two fierce struck two fierce struck days of dread not knowing what to expect during which time there was no true night one heart stopping sight after another passing before their horror filled eyes and when darkness did fall it was not the restful night darkness which soothes work weary men lulling them to uh, ever la- to revitalizing sleep no indeed it was the form of darkness known as the smothering cloak of the, the north though never n- before had it spread so wide water streamed downward from the fountain spouts of the sky not as rain falls but as water drops out from a pail upturned neither was it the pure true rain it was tainted with bitter blood from once some strange battlefield in the vast sky spaces contained broken pieces of the rainbow so bitter blood that that sounds like wormwood bitter tainted with bitter blood the rain was tainted with bitter blood from some strange battlefield in the vast sky spaces and contained broken pieces of the rainbow the sky roof itself was borne down to the very surface of the seething waters and as we've read in other ancient scriptures that the that it was full the firmament was full all the way to the top and overflowing and this this confirms that scripture the sky roof itself was borne down to the very surface of the seething waters so either the sky roof fell down or the waters filled it up because we're kind of like we're the footstool of Jesus but it's it's almost like a snow globe you know because when you look up you can obviously see that it's not flat like a footstool it's rounded like a snow globe um the sky itself was borne down to the very surface of the seething waters and mother earth cowered beneath it as a shrinking field mouth cowers before the harvester's footfall and a vast black cloud was drawn like a curtain across the sky roof stretching from horizon to horizon rising above it were strange billows of flame and smoke though what the fire consumed it is not possible to even guess for all know water does not burn then all things ceased movement all was silent and still a heavy ill-boding brooding silence the stillness of heart-hammering fear then with awful suddenness came a high wave wall of dark white fanged edge waters sweeping swiftly along in fearsome irresistibility it carried everything before it as a broom sweeps the floor accompanying it was a high-born note a long drawn out high-born note behind it upon the seething waters all the fruits of the land house debris trees bloated dead animals humans floated upon the wild wide waters there was an earthy brown foamy scum which drifted strangely over the surface not sinking yet not like oil for it was gritty it was irregular and held together it was like the scum on a fuller's tub there was a great downpouring of rain which stopped after 7 days then the sky roof rose back into its proper place and our fear struck forebearers saw once more the blessed light of day they stood up on their drenched mountain sides and saw great trees the likes of which had never before been seen float past hell formed hideous things came up from the depths and swelling bursts on the surface there were fearful sea monsters and great whirlpools terrible things from unknown places wild creatures were washed about dead or dying the surging seas tore between the high mountains 
in great riptides of dirty water. Standing on their hilltops, our frightened forebears saw the swimming house, made fast against the sea, come up to the land, and out from it came men and beast from Tufola. Okay, and let's jump again. Where is the next one? Oh, it is very good, this last one, but where did it go? Give me a minute, please. Where did it go? This is the most important one. Is it back here? Well, my goodness, I lost it. Did I skip one? Okay, got it. Here's a one part. Then came the year of the great flood of waters and though some say it was before these days when the salt seas rose up upon the east and covered the land men were warned beforehand by the shortening of the days of the years and the five days now added to the days of the year are days of sorrow for the alteration of things it is said that seven days before the coming of the waters the sun appeared in a different quarter but this is not easy to believe as the sun remains ever constant and we know that now to not be true the sailors of the king certainly departed for strange places during the chaos of waters perhaps this was because the sun had left his steady course and I'm still looking for this because it was I feel like I'm missing one this is what happens when you devour a book this size in one day. No, that's the chapter on death. It must be this way. Mm. Here it is. Oh, here, no, this isn't it either, but this is another one on Planet X. <laughs> it is said men came out of the devastation. Behind them the land sank and the earth shook, mountains split apart and crumbled. Where once there had been a valley now stood a mountain. The air was filled with smoke and hot rocks were hurled down from out of the sky. Men choked in brimstone. Great winds howled like a thousand unearthly wild dogs. They left all behind them and came across the wild places to the land of refuge. And so they're saying that the old land is not known. That knowledge has been lost to us. So um, when I find that verse, I will come back. Just go through these one time. I don't know I read that one. Is this it? Mm, I'm going to make a chapter of that later. And then there's the book of origins. And I was sure that there was something in here. Back here, it's um, prophesying Jesus, the man God. And this is prophesying what's going on, because as in the days of Noah, so it will be in the end times. And it says, uh, and I'm in the book of Lucius, chapter 11, 
the vision of evening, chapter uh, 11, verse 2. The matron of the coming days will bear strange children, aliens, blind to the light of beauty and nobility. The chants of weird forms of worship will be heard, and meaningless hymns will echo throughout the land. The devotional places will be wreathed in agnosia, and the purity of white enlightenment will be exchanged for the drab blackness of ignorance. Men will cease to seek their soul spirit sustenance in the light and will feed on agnosia. Unknowingly, darkness will be preferred to the light. The theme of life will be death, and death will even be idolized in the form of a man, speaking of the uh, Antichrist. The righteous man will be held up to scorn, and the irreligious will be deemed wise. Those with twisted minds will be held intelligent. Those who declare the that good can only serve a worldly end will be considered righteous. All this will result from spiritual poverty, lack of enlightenment, yet they will declare themselves rich and enlightened. The impoverished cannot surround themselves with grandeur, and this implies both to the flesh and to the spirit. Consideration for the soul spirit will be non-existent and belief in its immortality will be treated as a jest, as a joke. The mind of man will either be set on worldly things or be clouded, excuse me, clouded by a fog of spiritual darkness. There will be no respect for spirituality. There will be persecution and wars, riots and looting. All manners of deceit and oppression will be practiced in the name of of angry and revengeful gods. Allah, right? Worse still, all this will be practiced in the name of good, and men will blindly accept what they are told and execute orders running contrary to their very natures. When spirituality has reached its uh, lowest ebb and religion has decayed, the wheel will turn again. Men will either rise up with an influx of spiritual regeneration or go down and utterly perish in the dark depths of moral degeneracy. The world cannot be permitted to remain a spiritual festering sore, failing to serve any purpose. These are things buried in the future with which it is unprofitable to deal, so what is said must suffice. Better by far to deal with the problems of today, though even these are less important than learning the secrets of the true way. And he starts talking about the Holy Spirit. The awakened soul, a uh, spirit of man, becomes filled with a yearning not there before, an overwhelming desire for constant communication or unity with the sphere of the Holy Spirit. Uh, sphere, luminary. <laughs> these are... Yes, I mean, as this manifests more strongly and desires, inclinations tend to disappear. The ego disappears. The soul spirit grows from strength to strength. And since the earth is the work of the supreme spirit, he who cherishes and improves it or adds to its beauty and goodness becomes an assistant to the creator. This is a position all should aspire to. The earth must not be uncouth or unadorned, those who benefit most from life are those who serve it best. I have spoken of the man-god, and I will go back and make another video. Uh, that's a whole chapter by itself, the man-god. Of the very few who are gifted with purity of mind and high intellect. These are the ones who should marshal the forces of mankind to serve the Creator, Yahuwah. But all too often, good men are not great men. Or great men, good. As things are, a man who is both good and great is a rarity. To be spiritual means living life to the fullest in its widest sense, 
making conscious contact not only with the sphere of matter and mortality, but also the sphere of the Holy Spirit, as this means the spiritual man differs from ordinary men. The crowd is not able to understand him. <laughs> Welcome to my world. And often the crowd is not able to understand him. And often he is treated with scorn. Thank you, Jesus, that most people around me respect me. Amen. This does not deter the spiritual man who knows the mockery and scorn of the crowd are usually directed against someone superior to it. When I was held up to ridicule, scorned, and even believed mad, I felt flattered. And, um, what's this? Okay, and then there's some, some chapters back here on Jesus. Let's wrap it up. Yahuwah bless you and keep you. Angels surround you and protect you. Thank you, Yahuwah, for this time we've had together. Amen.